we're really lucky in Alberta because we have this thing called the Alberta Supernet that connects all the libraries and schools and hospitals. Uh, and uh, I understand that there's a, a special sort of network within the Supernet. I'm not quite sure how that all works. Uh, how, how does it work? How, how does this, uh, this super video conferencing network work? Alberta is really the envy of a lot of other areas across Canada and the world. We have the SuperNet, um, and essentially a private video conference network was created on SuperNet. And what that meant uh, was not only could school jurisdictions communicate very easily from a technical standpoint once all the equipment was configured, but also a guaranteed level of bandwidth. For example, uh, if we weren't on uh, a private video conference network. If you're in a school, for example, and you've connected your video conference equipment to someone uh, from another school jurisdiction, and the computer lab next door fires up 30 computers at the same time to hit a particular website, uh, you know, it could really interfere with the amount of bandwidth and the quality of video conference that's happening. So, um, you know, this guarantees a certain level of bandwidth, uh, which is very important to high quality audio and video. Uh, with anybody across Alberta. Now it uses the, you know, the, the video conference network we use here in Alberta and, and uh, a lot of video conference systems across the world are using a protocol called H.323. And, and the long and short of that in terms of what that means is uh, you can't typically connect these types of video conference systems with some other computer-based applications uh, that are used for video conferences such as MSN Messenger or Skype or iChat, uh, which use a different protocol. Um, now, what we found in the early days, you know, of IP video conferencing, early days meaning five or six years ago, was that every school jurisdiction and every institution, post-secondary, otherwise government institution, library, and so on, uh, most of them have a secure internal network. Uh, they don't want information to travel freely in and out uh, for security purposes, um, and so, you know, that presented a challenge in terms of this video traffic and audio traffic being able to travel uh, easily and uh, without delay uh, to all the different school jurisdictions. So to, you know, to overcome that challenge, uh, every school jurisdiction in the province and, and every uh, institution that uses SuperNet has what's called a video edge device, which basically allows that video and audio traffic to uh, traverse that uh, secure network and, and, and not experience any blockages by a firewall, for example. Uh, that relates a bit to sort of the, another element of this network is the, the dialing scheme. In other words, what, what numbers and how we actually connect the video conference systems to each other. It uses a dial scheme called E.164. So uh, in terms of what E164 dialing means is, what you'll see, and you'll see it on the screen here, uh, in green we have at the end of this dial string we have an IP address, but at the beginning we have, uh, for school jurisdictions anyways, we have a 10-digit number followed by the at symbol and then the IP address. Now what the IP address is, you, you heard me mention the video edge device. Uh, so it's sitting on the edge of a, a school jurisdiction, for example, uh, is this video edge device, and this IP address is assigned to that video edge device. Well, so the video conference call, if I'm dialing this uh, particular number on the screen here, uh, it will first route itself right to this video edge device, and then it will look at uh, the red portion at the beginning, which is a 10-digit number. Uh, that refers to an individual video conference unit within that network. So the, the, the IP address at the end refers to the organization or institution, and then the you know, the first 10 digits is the sort of the extension, if you will, almost like the phone extension uh, for the actual video conference unit. Um, in addition to being able to dial each other directly within SuperNet, uh, for a number of reasons, we want to sometimes connect more than one call together at the same time. Uh, you and I would be in a point-to-point -point call, for example, but there are many reasons that we'll talk about in a little bit why we would want to connect to multiple sites at the same time almost a conference call a video conferencing, if you will. Um, as well, we may want to connect with others outside of Alberta SuperNet. Uh, perhaps it's a private business somewhere or an individual, an expert presenter who's uh, presenting from home outside of SuperNet or another country, for example. Um, 
the Alberta government does provide uh, support for multi-point video conference calls as well as uh, bridging services to bridge those calls from outside of SuperNet into SuperNet. So that's another very important element of this, uh, the VC network that we have here in Alberta. Uh, finally, one other point regarding this network, um, in terms of, you know, we saw in the K-12 system, for example, four or five years ago, a lot of school jurisdictions were interested in purchasing this equipment. Alberta Education assisted in this area with some base funding. Uh, Alberta Education negotiated some uh, educational standing offers with the several equipment manufacturers, uh, both the video conference equipment as well as some of the peripheral devices that are used with video conferencing to give those school jurisdictions the most competitive pricing and make those dollars stretch as far as they could. So uh, that program is still in place and, uh, and so school jurisdictions purchasing any type of video conference equipment and other, other technologies as well for that matter. Uh, can, can do so at the, the best possible prices. 